Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing today? So, I'm back, and I am going, I've been taking a little break, busy working on caring for the geckos, I've been volunteering almost every single day for the past four weeks, so I've been very busy, unable to put videos out very often, so, and I'm here now, and I'm redoing Norm's tank, because I never liked how it look in, looked in the beginning, and I just wanted to bring you guys through the process of it. So here's what it looks like, completely stripped down, no plants, no nothing, except for a rock down here, which will stay there. And I'll be telling you about some cool things along the way. So here's what it's like, nothing in it, I'm just adding in water, this is this is, um, what is it? Excavator clay, so I could just add water to it and reshape it and everything. And I'm going to need some more, but that's fine. I could work with that. And I'll be cleaning all of his props and everything, too. Just throw that on the ground. And overall, I'll just be bringing you through the process of adding different things. Is this a rock in here? Yes, it is. I did that out because every rock matters. So yeah, and plus I've been busy working on my other channel, Ohio Keller 2, so I have some big projects going on there. Here's a sneak peek for the next episode, right below me. Yep, it's going to be about butterflies. And that's a little, if you want to see what I'm doing with them, go check out Ohio Keller. And I will see you in the next step of this process once I get this all watered. Alright YouTube, the next step was I mixed it all up after I moistened it down and took a spoon and patted it all down, making sure that there were no, nothing was really lumpy. I also kind of smoothed it out, kind of getting the shapes that I want in there. And now comes the next step, which is getting washing off the materials, washing off the old... Um, off the wood, off the rocks, off the fake plant, and then putting in the um, decorations, and then adding Norm in there. So we're almost done. So, uh, someday I'm going to add a light in here, and then replace the fake plant with a few live ones. I think that'd be cool. But that's probably going to be a while before that. So. So Norm goes to the bathroom in this corner, so I don't want to leave anything here, just leave it open so I can clean it easily. This heat mat's right here, and that will heat up a lot in this general area. So I want to put like an overhead thing over here, I'll figure that out when I get, um, when I clean everything. And then this hole I want to be is moist side, as you know, this is what his moist side looks like. That doesn't look too good in there, so I might figure something else out. So I'm still working on that. So I'll see you outside in the bucket with all the decor in it. Alright, now we're outside, and as you can see, the water's all muddy from where I put all the stones and everything. So the decorations we have is this awesome piece of wood that I got from my grandma's house a few years ago. That's been in the, that's been around a while, so you guys have seen it often, so let's just give that a good wash off, and then leave it to the side to dry. Next we have this neat little piece of wood I found out while hiking with my nature group, with a group that I volunteer with, it's a little camp group, so. They were picking up sticks and stuff, and one dropped this one. It was like, oh, that'd be looking in a leopard gecko habitat. So I let that to dry. Next, we have this big piece of wood from my fish tank many years ago. This was sitting in the shed. This has been through many different tree frog tanks, toad tanks. But I never use it for a leopard gecko tank, I believe. So we're going to let that to dry. And then we just have some rocks, some slate that I got from Tennessee, it's actually shale. You can see all the layers in there, that's really cool. 
And leopard geckos come from a um, from a scrubland habitat of grasses and grasses, large rocks, rocks in the soil, and the soil's very clay-like, so they don't need they don't need sand. Sand would be good to add into the soil, like what I have now, but to give a little bit more finer texture. But they need mostly um, clay. So we want to just put some stuff out there. Let's see. I know there's a few other big pieces in here. Oh, here's his main hide. I will be using this in here too. This thing has also been through a lot of roughness. I got this offline off of Amazon. It's very nice. I think this is what I'll put over his um, warm hide, or as his warm hide. Oh dear, there's a mosquito flying around me. I do not like mosquitoes. They are not our friends. They are food for other animals, but they are not our friends. Okay. Now we have the... Let me stand up here. Okay. Now we have the fake cactus. The cactus I see here, it's a it's a um, barrel cactus, and these come from the deserts of um, Arizona and the United States deserts. So, not native to the area, might put this in another tank and get a different fake plant that is more natural looking. Make sure I'm not getting killed by mosquitoes. Now we have all the rocks and his and his um, water bowl. So we're just going to take each one, scrub it off. Oh, it's breaking. It's just, just shattering in there. Well, be careful, of course, but hey, that gives me more stuff to work with. Okay, I thought that was a mosquito. Sorry about that. Yeah, when you add water to these types of things, this is some neat looking rock. They start to break. Especially to the shale. I have more in uh, my closet. But that is... That's fine because I don't have a use for that. That's just a little crystal rock that came from a cactus that I rescued. And then we have this. I don't know where I got that. Then we have his moist hot, I mean his water bowl. Is that a good scrub down with my thumbs? Okay, it feels good. Sadly, I don't have gloves, otherwise I'd be wearing gloves. Make sure no rocks fell. Aha! I knew there was something more. Here's another rock, another piece of shale. And then anything else in here? Yes, I knew there was something more always more. And then this cool rock which I got from, I have no clue where. I think from my aunt's place or something. So I'll leave these out to dry as the air conditioner turns on and I'll see you guys at the next section. Hello YouTube. The tank is done and all set up. As you can see we have a ro little rock pile over here for Norm to crawl, climb on and along with his water bowl. We have his rock hide in here, which also acts as his moist hide. It's hard to tell, but there's some paper, wet paper towel in there. And then as his warm hide, he could get under here. There's a magnolia leaf here that I got from my local zoo. That I am cleaned and everything, so it's all nice and safe. And then we have this. This big log from my fish tank. That is back here, and plus there's a space for him to crawl if he wants to hide. That's on his warm side. Then over here we just have some stuff for him to climb on. Here's a few more rocks. And overall, I like it a lot. Now, on my Facebook page, there was something about enrichment that I shared with leopard ge about leopard geckos. They did a research paper, they did a research test on leopard geckos to see if enrichment helped improve their life in captivity. And it did. So, giving them toys like like just random leaves like this changing up their habitat every once in a while giving them social interactions with humans and other geckos and also giving them the hunting instinct and they had, and what they found out was leopard geckos are extremely similar to large carnivores in 
in ways like enrichment. Like lions, tigers, bears, um, those sorts of animals are similar to leopard geckos in their enrichment style. So, go to my Facebook page to find that. There's a giant leopard gecko face on that article. Sadly, you're only able to see part of it because of, um, you have to pay to see the rest of it, which is stupid. But that is all. I hope you like his tank, and I'll see you guys in the next video.